Hey everyone and welcome to Bintel's first edition of What's in the Sky, your monthly guide to stargazing from Australia and New Zealand. Whether you're out with a pair of binoculars, a telescope, or even just your very own eyes, we'll show you what to look for, when to look for it, and why it's worth your time. Mars is still visible in early May, sitting low in the northern sky after sunset. It's a little dimmer now than it was at the beginning of the year, and over the next few months it'll gradually slip out of view. Eventually, it won't be visible again until late 2026, so it's worth keeping an eye on while it's still around. Saturn is back in the pre-dawn sky from around May the 28th, and here's the cool part. Its rings are edge-on. You'll only get two chances to catch this for the next 15 years, later in November, and right now in May. Meaning this month is one of the few times you'll be able to see Saturn without its iconic rings. Right next to Saturn in the pre-dawn sky is Neptune. You'll need a telescope to spot it, and it appears as a tiny bluish dot standing out against the background stars. Larger telescopes will reveal it as a small but distinct blue-gray disk, and though it's not the most detailed view, it's still pretty incredible. You're looking at the most distant major planet in the solar system after all, over 4 billion kilometers away. And finally, there's Venus, the morning star. Early in May, it's a slim crescent low in the east before sunrise. By the end of the month, Venus reaches what's called its greatest western elongation, the furthest it gets from the sun in our skies. At that point, it will look like a bright half circle through binoculars or a small telescope. This is a great time to get up early and see one of the most beautiful sights in the sky. Now on to some deep sky targets. If you're after a real showstopper this month, the Carina Nebula is it. It's one of the brightest and most spectacular deep sky objects that you can see from Australia and a true Southern Hemisphere exclusive. Even small telescopes in dark skies will pick out the glowing gas and dark dust lanes. And even if you're observing from the suburbs, using a UHC filter can really help boost the contrast and reveal more detail. With larger scopes, you'll start to see the dramatic V-shaped dust lanes slicing across the nebula. And it's one of those sites that you really don't forget. If you're using a smart telescope, be ready. Carina is actually so big that you'll potentially struggle to keep it in frame. Instead of trying to fit it all in, we recommend to try to focus in on some of the smaller features of the nebula, such as the famous Keyhole Nebula in the center. The best time to observe between 7 and 8 p.m. If the Carina Nebula feels a bit too massive to handle, just nearby is the Gabriel Maestral Nebula, a perfect target, especially for smart telescope users. This is the same region that the James Webb Space Telescope made famous for with its cosmic cliffs image. Uh, it's a smaller and more compact nebula and it fits nicely into the field of view of smart telescopes like the Seastar S50. Visually, it's a tough object. Even larger telescopes may struggle to show much in the way of nebulosity, but if you're imaging, it really shines. Look for it between 7 and 8 p.m. Not far from the Gabriella Maestral Nebula, you'll find the Gem Cluster. And this one's a real treat through the eyepiece. It's a small, tight open cluster that resolves beautifully even in modest telescopes. I've seen it pop out nicely in a 70 millimeter refractor, and it really comes alive in larger Dobsonians. If you're using a smart telescope, you might even pick up the faint glow of some nebulosity. It's subtle, but it adds a nice layer to your images. The best viewing for this is between 7 and 8 p.m. Another easy and beautiful target this month is the Southern Pleiades. You can spot this cluster with the naked eye even from suburban skies, and it shows up as a soft glow near the Carina region. Through binoculars or a low-power telescope, it looks incredible. Bright blue-white stars scattered across the field, almost like jewels on velvet. It's a simple, satisfying target that doesn't need fancy gear, perfect for beginners or anyone wanting a quick win before moving on to tougher objects. Look for it in the skies between 7 to 8 p.m. If you love star clusters, be sure to check out the Wishing Well Cluster, one of the finest in the southern sky. Through the eyepiece, it looks like a pile of silver coins scattered at the bottom of a well. That's how it gets its name. And with a bunch of bright young stars packed together beautifully. It's a fantastic star cluster from the suburban skies and absolutely spectacular from dark ones, where subtle color differences between the stars really start to pop out. It's a must-see object and best viewed between 7 and 8 p.m. Now for a real challenge this month, we suggest pointing your telescope towards the antenna galaxies. This pair of galaxies are slowly colliding and forming a heart shape in space. 
Visually, it's a tough catch. You'll need really dark skies and a big telescope just to pick out a faint smudge. But for astrophotographers and smart telescope users, it's a brilliant target. With longer exposures, you can start to tease out the delicate tidal tails stretching outward. The result of two galaxies in the middle of a slow motion cosmic collision. It's one of those targets that really rewards patience and the best time to try for it, between 7.30 and 8.30 p.m. All right, before we wrap up, here are some extra highlights you may want to check out this month. The Hand Cluster, the Pearl Cluster, the Leo Triplet, and the Running Chicken Nebula. For more info on these and all the other great objects in this video, you can find all the details in our blog linked down below.